Hey, this is Swapnil Bhartia from Mukta.com and today we are going to talk about something I have been waiting for a while. Yes, you guessed it right. OpenSUSE 13.1 has been released and today we are going to review it. What's the chameleon say? Ring, ding, 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 ring, ding, 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 ring, ding, 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 ding. What's the chameleon say? A chop, 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 chop. To be honest with you, I've been using OpenSUSE 13.1 for a while since the early milestone days so I'm quite aware what's going on in there. In this review I will focus on the core features of OpenSUSE, what's new. I won't talk much about KDE or GNOME because they were released earlier and we've already talked about what's new in KDE 4.12 or GNOME 3.10. So in this review I will basically focus on the core features of OpenSUSE. I will also talk a little bit about why I chose OpenSUSE over other distributions. Though the fact is I actually use OpenSUSE and Arch Linux on my main systems. There are different reasons why I use Arch Linux. But I will, I will highlight the fact that why I chose OpenSUSE over other distributions such as Ubuntu. At the same time, I will also talk a little bit about how easy or difficult it is to use OpenSUSE. So let's just get started with the first thing. When you talk about Linux, the first thing that comes to mind is how easy or difficult is it to install it because if you look at Windows or Mac systems the OS comes pre-installed on the hardware so you don't have to deal with the installation process but in the case of Linux you have to install it yourself so sometimes the, the ease of use or the installation process can be a deal breaker for a user I use Arch Linux but I will not recommend it to an average user because it's a bit difficult to install it. You can install it but it's difficult. So when we look at our OpenSUSE, how easy or difficult it is. I have created a, a video about the installation process of OpenSUSE though you can go online. There are so many wikis and how to's which will help you in installing OpenSUSE but you can check that video which will give you an idea about the installation process. But in a nutshell it's extremely easy to install OpenSUSE. It's all GUI based. It's click next model. The only part where it's tricky is partitioning and it's tricky everywhere whether you're using Ubuntu or Kubuntu or Linux Mint partitioning is always a tricky part. So beyond partitioning everything is extremely easy in OpenSUSE. So once the installation is done and it, it depends on which desktop environment do you prefer uh, though KDE Plasma is its default desktop environment but you can choose GNOME, you can choose um, E17 and I think you can choose LXD. So there are different options available uh, from the install media itself if you have downloaded DVD. The best thing about OpenSUSE is that every desktop environment is treated like the first class citizen. It doesn't really matter whether you are using GNOME or KDE, you have access to all the core OpenSUSE technologies. And the best thing is that OpenSUSE detects which desktop environment you're using and it will open that uh, application using the appropriate toolkits like if you're in KDE, JAS will open using Qt. If you are in GNOME, JAS will open with GTK. So the overall feel of the operating system is really good. So OpenSUSE teams have done a really great job at integrating those desktop environment with the OpenSUSE based system. So that's another good thing. Just look at, for example, Ubuntu. Uh, if you are a GNOME user, GNOME and Unity just don't work very well together on the same system. The things will break. You won't get the full GNOME experience there. If you're using Kubuntu and if you install Ubuntu Software Center there, it just looks out of place. But that is not the case with OpenSUSE. All the applications, they just look beautiful, irrespective of what desktop environment you're running. So what's new in OpenSUSE 13.1, though I would suggest you go to this link and check out what's new there because it's a huge list. And as an end user, I really don't care much about uh, the, the, the deeper layer, you know, which a developer would be interested in. As a user, I am mostly interested in how it will affect my usage. So if you look at OpenSUSE 13.1, uh, a few things that I can talk about is most notably the kernel. It comes with the 3.11 series kernel, which has uh, 
a lot of improvements in terms of device driver support another notable thing uh, with this version is uh, improved support for chrome devices it means everybody knows that chrome books uh, the number one linux powered devices out there on amazon.com that's the number one best selling i guess so if you are a chrome user you can very easily use opensuse 13.1 on it at the same time um, it has also improved support for Intel's new chip, which is Haswell. So I think you will be able to use uh, all the features of Haswell chips, which is basically, I think, power efficiency. And if you're a Raspberry Pi user, there is good news for you because with this version, OpenSUSE has uh, switched to hard float and they have created a completely new uh, distro for the 64-bit chip, which is used in Raspberry Pis. So all the Raspberry Pi and open source users, they should be now happy because they can use OpenSUSE with their favorite $35 device. There's one thing in OpenSUSE that I think other distros uh, may feel envy is Yast. I, I don't know about other users, but I love Yast because Yast is one tool which lets you do almost everything from one place. You don't have to just find what's where. And as you can see, it has, it offers you complete control over your, uh, you can see system, whether it's hardware, whether it's software, whether it's networking, whether it's firewall, everything is at one place. And if you're a KDE user, then the combination of KDE with Yast is the best thing you can expect. In terms of uh, integration, once again, uh, it, it, it works well with any desktop environment that you're using. Security and privacy are buzzwords these days. And when we look at OpenSUSE, it respects your privacy and it also ensures your uh, security. It comes with a very strong, very advanced firewall with some ports enabled or blocked by default. So your system is secure by design. Your system is secure by default, which contrasts Ubuntu. And let's not even get started on the whole Dash online integration thingy, which is a serious privacy risk, which uh, unfortunately Canonical is not willing to uh, make compromises on despite issues with EFF and FSF. Anyway. So, so if, if I'm concerned about my privacy and if I'm concerned about my security, OpenSUSE is secured by design. OpenSUSE respects my privacy by design, contrary to what Ubuntu does. So what kind of hardware support is there for OpenSUSE 13.1? As far as I'm concerned, um, everything worked out of the box. All my hardware worked out of the box. Yes, I have an HP printer. It was click next and it, it automatically had the driver, it installed the driver and connected to my printer. I have faced no problem whatsoever with any of my devices, though there was one laptop which has an old Broadcam chip. But once again, I just searched for the driver in the software management tool and installed the driver and it was working. So in terms of hardware, everything is working out of the box. So there's nothing that I should be worried about as far as hardware is concerned. What kind of apps are available under OpenSUSE and how hard or difficult it is to install apps? First of all, everything that is available for any other distribution is available for OpenSUSE. All the commercial and non-free applications are available under OpenSUSE. So if you are a Dropbox users, user, you can simply install Dropbox once you have enable the Pacman repository. You can install Skype, you can install Google Chrome, and just you name any tool out there which is available for Linux is available for OpenSUSE, including, of course, the Steam client for Linux. So you will not face any problem uh, in terms of application on OpenSUSE. As far as installation is concerned, to be honest, I love Arch Linux because um, it doesn't matter where the package is, you can just run packer and install the package whether it's in main repository or whether it's on the user repository in terms of OpenSUSE or Ubuntu Ubuntu uses PPA but the problem that I faced was first of all you have to hunt online you have to google for the particular application and PPA and then you have to add the PPA manually and then you have to install it uh, with OpenSUSE everything is quite easy you just go to software.opensuse.org search for the package and then choose the version of OpenSUSE that you're using and there will be a one-click install button. Once you click that button, 
it will open Yast and install the package. Of course, it will ask you to trust or verify the key that uh, so that you know you know it's coming from the trusted source, and that's all it is. It just install it so easily. I found it a bit, um, I think, uh, glitchy on Ubuntu because uh, for some packages you have to log into your Ubuntu One account. At the same time, there are a lot of free packages, but it still says buy it. So there is a lot of inconsistency on Ubuntu, whereas on OpenSUSE, I, I personally find it a, a better experience on OpenSUSE than on Ubuntu, but that is my personal preference. So let's quickly wrap up this review come opinion piece. So who are the target users of OpenSUSE? I don't know what SUSE thinks. I don't know what the OpenSUSE community thinks, but that is my opinion. OpenSUSE is a mature operating system for grown-ups, for people who want their work to be done without worrying about uh, next release might change some defaults which might break their workflow. So if you want your work to be done, go with OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE is an operating system for those who want privacy, who want a very secure operating system. When you install OpenSUSE, you know that a lot of features are enabled by default. A lot of features are there by design, which protects your privacy, which protect your, the security of your system. OpenSUSE is a very good operating system for those who are coming from Windows because of the privacy and security settings because those users may not even know that there are a lot of things which are enabled by default which are leaking their data or which may pose any privacy or security risk. So if you are bringing any Windows user, I think OpenSUSE is a better option due to their default privacy and security settings. And if you are somebody who just uh, want a modern Linux experience, that's what it is. So if you have not tried OpenSUSE, please go ahead and download it. That does not mean that you should only use OpenSUSE. Please use the operating system that makes sense for you. Use the operating system that works for you. I mean, if you are somebody who is posting almost everything that you do in your life on Facebook all the time, Ubuntu's Unity Dash is nothing compared to what you're already doing. So it, it, it doesn't make any sense for you to use OpenSUSE or for you to be worried about privacy and security. Just go ahead and use it. Use Arch Linux, use Fedora, use Debian, use XYZ, whatever distribution is out there. Every distribution has its own beauty. Every distribution has its own uh, pros and cons. I prefer OpenSUSE for the very reasons that I cited. So just because I use OpenSUSE doesn't mean you should also use it. I means I like this shirt. That doesn't mean you should also wear the same shirt. Yes, of course, I might tell you some benefits of this shirt, but that does not mean that I force you to wear it. Similarly, use the operating system that matters. Use the operating system that works the best for you. There is no flame war. Yeah, there are some healthy debates, but nothing beyond that. So just look at it as a in a very sporting manner, use what works for you. What's the chameleon say? Ring, ding, 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 ring, ding, 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 ring, ding, 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 ding. What's the chameleon say? A cha 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 cha. Happy hacking.